Playing for Keeps, presented by Jiffy Lou. With the voice, Milt Thompson. Delivering the best of sports programming. Interviews with top celebrities. And the answer to the question, where are they now? And now, Milt Thompson, playing for keeps. And welcome again to Playing for Keeps. I am your host, the voice, Milt Thompson, here every Friday night on WHMB Channel 40. And we bring you the best in sports programming. And I have to thank you, though, because I've been getting all kinds of wonderful comments, letters, emails, text messages stopping me on the street saying, you really have enjoyed this kind of programming and you have been patronizing our great sponsors, of course, Steve Santer and Jiffy Lube. I mean, how can you get a better sponsor than that? And someone who loves sports tr traditionally and is a supporter of Sports Corporation and other organizations around and every event that happens in town. So go get your automobile serviced by Jiffy Lube with all their wonderful services and go to Blinky Dill and Crandall. Nice law firm that can handle any kind of things that you need. And E-Spot Spas, Regenerative Healing. Go to them. They've been getting remarkable healing efforts and things that are happening out there with testimonials across the board. Uh, in fact, I even got a treatment just recently, and I'm feeling better. So I know that you'll want to patronize them as well, and we're going to be bringing on another sponsor, the Hope Training Academies uh, that are into workforce development and creating opportunities for all kinds of folks to get a J-O-B. And, you know, We've had some very, very powerful women on our show here recently. Of course, we've had, uh, as we called her, the Mooresville Flash, the Matriarch, uh, Sandy Knapp, and uh, two shows in a row to, to uh, uh, handle that. And then from her coaching tree, we had the super Allison Melanchthon, and that was fantastic, too. And uh, recently, we've had um, the indefatigable, you know what that was? That was Kathy Jordan, the indefatigable Kathy Jordan, and boy, did she get a, a social media following after our show? Well, you know what? Today's special guest is, reminds me very, very much of one of my favorite artists as well as musicians. And that is Sade. And what was one of the favorite songs? She was a smooth operator. And we have the smooth operator on our show today, and we're going to come back and talk to Susan Buffin in one moment. We'll be right back. Don't blame for Playing for Keeps, presented by Jiffy Lou. Playing for Keeps, presented by Jiffy Lou. Welcome back to Playing for Keeps. Again, I am your host, the voice, Mill Thompson, and we're talking about smooth operators because operations is how I really first got to know this woman. Uh, our special guest has been through everything and every level of play that's out there. Uh, welcome to our show. Thanks for having me in, Mel. I like my nickname. <laughs> well, do you like it? See, I do. Sometimes that's why I had to expose it to you very, very late so that we won't talk about your off-the-camera <laughs> conversations of folks downtown um, while you're Having working, fun. Having fun. <laughs> having fun <laughs> and, downtown. And oftentimes in the month of May, people are having fun way <laughs> too much. But, you know, we've been having fun uh, for years uh, with you and primarily as the, the chief operator. A lot of people... Uh, at the highest levels and people we think about out here, they come up with all these great ideas about how we can do things in Indianapolis. And then they say, well, we can do it, but they don't do it. They have to have operators do it. And for as long as I can remember any event, all the way back from your days, I think in the early 90s, after yeah. you left school and into the gymnastics, and we'll, we'll explore that a little bit, but you were the one that they said, will you do this, please? Yeah, I'm definitely an operations person at heart. I love that, putting the puzzle together. Like, how do you actually get from the idea to create something that can actually happen and then all the way through the event? I, I always love that. I'm passionate about that. Yeah, well, you, you got your start coming out of IU uh, Journalism School and from Mooresville, very yeah. much like Sandy Knapps. You Mighty got, pioneer. So you got, got that in, in your background. And, and uh, what got you into the world of sports? Yeah, actually, I was lucky to work with uh, Sandy Knapp and Allison Melanchthon. You mentioned both of them being on the show um, at the 91 World Gymnastics Championship, which was in the RCA, RCA Dome, Dome at the time. Exactly. And uh, I really came from a background that I didn't even know about sport events jobs, so I wasn't headed towards that. And I got into it from a community interest and a journalism standpoint. Right. Um, but I quickly found that I liked the logistics side of putting together that, that puzzle and the matrix of how to make the event work. Uh, so that's how I got started, and I worked for USA Gymnastics for about seven years, 
and then um, was so lucky to get a job at Indiana Sports Corporation in their events department and just went from there and had the opportunity to do everything from Olympic trials to uh, men's Final Fours, uh, local events, all the way through to the Super Bowl. And then most recently, as you yes, know, the, yes. the 2022 College Football National Championship weekend. Well, we're going to have a little conversation about the smooth operator in all of those roles. Uh, uh, kind of like the two Benner boys. I think they were the two brother acts that we've had on this show. Uh, yeah. But you started at the Star, right? In, in, yeah, in, I was a stringer little. at the Indianapolis Star. That's a little known fact. Yeah, so they, you have, you're good at your research. I do my research. Yes, I... I came out um, as a stringer for the star. I worked, my editor was Kim Kimberly. He was a wonderful boss. He taught me a lot. And it was, this is so crazy, but it was long enough ago that I filed stories by calling them in and reading them verbally to my editor and he typed them in. Like That was before laptops and, and filing electronically. So it doesn't seem that long ago, but that's kind of crazy to think about. But it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot during that. Right, so you're talking early 90s then, because the, 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 the um the city had already kind of gone through the sports festival and Pan American yes. Games and had beginning to shed their kind of inferiority complex, began to create and develop an image and, and we're moving on towards bigger events and probably no more multi-sport events, if you will, but we're probably going to do single uh, sport uh, world championships if we can, national championships if we can. Tell us about that gymnastics event um, that was ably led by Jack Swarbrick. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and how that operated through the Sports Corporation from bids all the way through to execution. Yeah, at the time, Sandy Knapp was the president of the Sports Corporation, Sports Corporation and Jack was um, in charge of the bid for the World Championships. Um, they worked together along with um, what was um, the ICVA, Indiana Convention and Visitors right. Association, the mayor's office and the state at the time. Um, put in a bid that had to go through USA Gymnastics to get a designation to have Indianapolis and Indiana be the state that would host, and then working with USA Gymnastics and, and going to um, the FIG, which is the international owner of the World Championships. Right. Uh, they put in the pitch, they were selected, and then they were able to use both the RCA Dome and the Convention Center and all the hotels downtown to really showcase the city, um, brought in gymnasts from all over the world, and we did a, a social club, which was a first for the World Gymnastics Championships. And we did it in what was the Pan Am ice rinks. And so right. that ended up being very special. It was called Club 91. And you had to have a membership through USA Gymnastics to go in there. And so that ended up being like the hot topic for the whole entire week. The teams, after they would win, would go over and meet the fans at the ice skating rink. And it was just a great party. So that was my entree into it. I learned so much from Sandy and Jack and Allison Melanchthon and all my coworkers at USA Gymnastics. Right. Um, and then from there, we had the great luck. Um, you were involved also with world basketball, the world right. swimming championships. Mm -hmm. uh, we did Solheim golf. You know, right. we just, we had such a great run of international events. And I think it just served a different public and a different fanship here in Indianapolis and central Indiana. Well, your roles have kind of evolved, too. I mean, you were the operations person, so when you're going to get something done, you, you're the ones with the, the bolts and the nuts and the screws and getting down to the detail. Well, everyone's kind of lofty and out thinking about how great things are going to be, and you're going to say, well, they have to be good and they have to be better than good and because we are doing what we do. Tell us about your specific roles in some of these events. Let's just start with gymnastics, then we'll get in as you emerge into management from operations. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, well, thinking back, like I remember that being my first big event. I really didn't know what all the parts and the pieces were. Um, I was so lucky to work for another great leader, Connie Israel, and she always told me, you have to troubleshoot. You have to think through from the very beginning to the end to figure out all the things that can go wrong. So you try to mitigate those before you get into the event. Um, she gave me wonderful advice with that. And I think also... Um, but for her and Jack, their, their message was always over communicate, make sure that you're explaining everything to as many people as you can, because no one person should hold all the answers to an event, which I think is something I still carry with me. Like it takes the, the whole network to make anything happen. And so you have to really think well beyond yourself. You have to get out to other people to make sure that you have everything covered. So um, for gymnastics, it was everything from ordering the bananas in the recovery room That's for the right. athletes to 
Uh, we had parties. I don't know if you remember, we had a measles outbreak during yes, the recall. World Championship. Yeah, so recall. one of the things we had to do was work with the health department to figure out how to do vaccinations on site. That was which, a good experience for yeah, later on, right? right? <laughs> brings us up to COVID. So yeah, like thinking of all the things you can plan for, but then there's those things that you would never imagine like a measles outbreak or COVID and, and trying to figure out how to work with people within the city to make those things happen. And I think my biggest learning over all those years was the relationships that you have with people Certainly. in order to have things pop up and just be able to call someone and be like, okay, we have a network of people in the state that are amazing and anything that happens can be solved, but you have to have the right phone number to get to that person to figure out how to move forward. So it was exciting, exciting times. Well, we on past shows, we've been able to talk with uh, Leonard Hoops and we've been able to talk with Ryan Vaughn and we've been able to talk with um, the Benners and all the various organizations that have to come together in downtown Indy and all the people that make these things happen. Everybody thinks they have a leadership role, but they always don't, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, in an in a odd way, it comes together so well in Indiana, and I, I feel like it's not the same necessarily in other cities because we go to other events to check them out, see how other host committees operate, and I think one of the keys to success has always been here, the selflessness of leadership. So while each person might play a prominent role in a certain event, they all come together to create that network of problem solving. I, I feel like that works really well in our city and state along with the government. So I feel like that those strong leadership roles, you know, they may not be assigned out task for task, right. but it's knowing you can go back to that group. It's almost like an advisory council that you can use to, to solve problems or to make plans that are good for everybody. And I think that's been another key here. I've enjoyed growing up in a system where um, sports might've been the focus of the event, but we're able to incorporate the arts and incorporate things that show off our city at its best, um, things for private business, to basically use the event as a greater good catalyst sure. for, uh, for all the parties involved. And I think, uh, to me, that's one of the things that keeps this really interesting because we can always do better for each other. Sure, and a little bit of secret sauce, our, our uh, lar large cadre of volunteers. Amazing people. People who step up to the plate, and when the smooth operator says, we need this done, and she has the task laid out, and Specific, specific ways, and you give them the task, and uh, more likely than not, they get it done, right? The volunteers here are unbelievable. And I think, uh, especially in my early days, I, I did volunteers when I was at World Gymnastics, but when I moved to the Sports Corp, that was one of the things that I was handling um, back when we scheduled people with a, a pen and a right. paper. Um, but there's always somebody willing to do whatever it is that we need, and, and I would have never thought. And you've been one of those in a operations role, doing what it takes, and we're going to talk about some of those next big events like uh, uh, the Super Bowl and Ooh. on to the big responsibility that you had this past year uh, with the National Football Championships right here in Indy. We'll be back with the smooth operator right after these are Susan Ball. Playing for Keeps, presented by Jiffy Lou. Playing for Keeps, presented by Jiffy Lou. Welcome back to Playing for Keeps. I am, again, your host, the voice, Mel Thompson, here with the smooth operator, Susan Buffman. And we've been talking about her advancing career in operations and the gymnastics where she really got her feet wet. And that kind of moved on to other major events. And one of those major events was the Super Bowl. And we had the Super One Allison Melanchthon here talking about that. But you were really involved in the Super Bowl. Uh, tell us about that from yeah. um, bids on forward. Yeah, I had the great opportunity to work with Allison putting together the bids for the Super Bowl. So really from the beginning when I feel like the idea really became a reality, like yes, Indianapolis can bid on a Super Bowl and yes, we could win and end up hosting this. You know, in the beginning, I think it was working on that belief system, like could we really do this? And we decided we could and then it was full on. So we, we worked on the bids for quite some time and when we actually presented them and received the award, um, I had the great opportunity to stay involved with that all the way through being on staff. Um, and I was responsible for the public facing fan events. So one of the biggest things that I did was the Super Bowl Village, um, where we had so much great band entertainment and other um, entertainment from the fringe and the district theater performers. Um, that was really something I will never forget. We did the zip line, you might remember. Right. Did you do the zip line? I did the zip line. Whew, thought I was gonna lose my life, but that's okay. Right. 
<laughs> Climbing the steps up to the zip line was like a moment. You're like, and now I'm going to just go off of here. But, but smooth um, operator, you mentioned the events in the street and Georgia Street and how those things kind of came together as a community and uh, building new hotels and other economic development things that kind of came along with it. Well, in your planning, the great operator, the smooth operator, uh, you're looking for it to be in like February, like cold. Uh, and yeah. it turned out not to be. So what were your adjustments that you made through that process? Yeah, I think we planned for the worst, knowing it could be that, and that that was great that it ended up being much better. But uh, everything we planned, I think we did it with an eye on uh, providing a distraction for people so they didn't really mind the cold if it was cold, or that they could move from a restaurant or a bar to their hotel, to the convention center, to the fan fest. Um, and, and have entertainment outside to where it felt like there was always something going on and we wanted the city to be alive and vibrant and make them feel like there was no place better for a Super Bowl. And I feel like that idea was not only uh, positive and it worked, but it also brought in a lot more people from central Indiana and drivable states that weren't even going to the game. And once they came, what we heard over and over was, I'm coming back every day. And the village became an actual village of Community members. community members. It was really fun and it was unforgettable. Well, the smooth operator made all those things happen. And then there's the other things that other people in other communities might say, that's the greatest things that ever happened to us. I mean, the Big Ten football championships, the um, uh, Final Fours of uh, women and men's Big Ten championships, uh, to and fro, and, and uh, we threw them, oh, well, we, we, we're good at this. We'll just make the next one better, right? And smooth operator uh, then has the, the biggest chore, I think, perhaps of her career. Uh, when she started moving from pure operations into management. Mm. Tell us about the, uh, <clears throat> the big national football championships, the inception until um, the ability for you to actually crown a national championship here in Indianapolis. Yeah, it was a great process. I think from the Super Bowl and with the success the Indiana Sports Corp has had with the Big Ten football championships, we thought that this would be a great event to add to our portfolio. So we never hosted the College Football National Championship. And much as we'd like to see some of our Indiana teams get in that, we're still rooting for that to happen. But we, we went for it. And so we put together that bid and we were really successful. Um, I feel like their philosophy was they wanted to move it around the nation. So it really is a national championship and it wasn't only going to the same cities over and again. But we were the first in Indianapolis to be a non-bowl city that hosted, and we were really the first cold weather city, right. if you put quotes around it, to host. It was cold in January, like appropriately so, but it's been cold in other cities when we've been there every year too. So there was an ice storm that went through Tampa and Atlanta and so on. Um, so I think people kind of look forward to or that or they don't mind that cold weather, throw on the coat, go root on your team. Uh, so when we had it come to Indianapolis, then we, we had this great host committee. We were run by a board. We had about 450 community members planning all those operational right. details. And we had about uh, 1,500 to 2,000 volunteers that really supported the effort. And, and it turned out great. I think, did you get a chance to come downtown? Uh, of course. <laughs> what a booming success, yeah. though, correct? I mean, in terms of not awesome. only the city, but uh, uh, from an organizational point of view, um, sprouting from the Sports Corp and, yep. and Super Bowl legacies and all the things that we were having. And for you there now to be able to pull and call the shots. Yeah, we had, a, we had our own uh, nonprofit that ran that event. Um, it was very successful. We had a really small staff, but we relied on that host committee process that we've used so successfully all these years in the past, all the way back to the, the Pan Am Games and the Sports Festival. So um, we thought it worked out great. I think our downtown is made for it. We called it a championship campus because you did feel like you were on a campus. And I think more than any other city, everybody got to see each other. You had that rivalry going and you really felt that spirit between Georgia and Al Alabama as they were walking around downtown. So it was really festive. For the last uh, minute before you, sh you show us and we're gonna tee up a video that talks about um, that uh, uh, crowning achievement, although it's not the last achievement we're gonna get from um, the smooth operator, um, a legacies being left, and that was kind of the model from the Super Bowl as well as any other event that we've got on a national level. Uh, tell us which one you're most proud of. Yeah, our legacy programs are all based around teachers, so it was really easy to support that, right? So it was everything from rewards and recognition and lifting up the profession of teaching to re helping support recruitment of minority teachers, um, which is so important to show that and, and mirror the students in the classroom. Uh, we did that, and we also did a lot of donors choose. We were gifting schools and teachers all over Indiana. We did middle school makeovers to update their schools. 
um, and we were able to, to help and touch teachers all over the state, so it was amazing. Uh, we, we invested money to create a Indiana Learning Lab, which is a digital platform that teachers could use all throughout COVID and beyond. It, it was so popular that it's been moved into the Indiana Department of Education's platform, and it will continue forward as a true legacy. So I have to say I'm really proud of all this. A lasting things. legacy from a true operator all the way up from made for this moment, right? And take a look at this video that she brought along for us. It kind of tells you about that crowning achievement. We'll be right back and close right after this short video. Welcome to Indianapolis. We love this environment. And this is the 2022 National Championship. Wow! What a game! This is your time, you're standing tall, you're electrified. When you believe you win this fight, let this moment shine. It's time to rise. Do you feel alive? Thank you for that video that gives you a little bit of insights uh, about how glamorous our city looks, your wonderful legacy programs that uh, are making teachers better and having teachers teach better uh, are really important things for the state of Indiana. Uh, I know our smooth operator here has other things on in, in sight for um, your roles operating. Do you have any clue as what's going on in your future? I'm looking forward to it. Right now, um, we are closing out the College Football National Championship, and we're doing our financials and our after-action report and kind of getting the history put together so that we have that if we bid again, um, which I hope that we do. And then uh, up next, like career search, I'll be really interested to uh, see what's out there for me. I'm really hoping to stay involved with the community. Um, I love Indianapolis and the state. I feel like there's no place better to bring an event or a convention. And so I'm hopeful that I can stay involved in a positive way. Well, you're, you're going to not only stay involved in a positive way, and you, I mean, you're causing uh, almost like the natural. I mean, lights to flash in our studio and they go out <laughs> like that. Maybe you get your operations gear on, you can go over there and fix that light here <laughs> before we close up. But it's been such an honor to have you. I've um, been so very proud of you and all of your roles and activities and the degree to which we've been able to work together uh, has been one of the blessings for me as well. Um, uh, and I want everybody here to consider what it means to be behind the scenes making things happen like our smooth operator has and always has and will do again. Uh, and, and we're so proud uh, to have her as a part of this strong lineup of strong and powerful women. Um, Susan, thank you so much. Um, for being the smooth operator that you are and being Thank with you. us. All right, everybody here, you know, playing for keeps again next Friday night. We're going to have another fantastic version of Where Are They Now? And you're going to come back for playing for keeps. And this is your host, the voice, Mil Milt Thompson. I don't even know my own name. I'm the voice, Milt Thompson. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you very much.